Thanks, Leslie. Good, good evening um, and welcome to the Lazelle's um, online board meeting um, uh, um, that's, been, that's taking place this evening on the 18th of January. I'm saying, I, I'm, I'm saying the date because some people might be watching this um, later on uh, uh, the Council's YouTube channel. So this meeting is being recorded um, um, so, it, it, so it can be uploaded onto the Council's uh, YouTube site and also onto the council's website with a link to the YouTube section so that residents who can't make it this evening uh, are able um, to, to watch the meeting. Um, we were hoping that this meeting would be in hybrid format um, so we can get people meeting in person too but uh, mm -hmm. the gov un under the government's plan B guidelines um, the council are not facilitating face to face public meetings with, with residents and recommending that we meet online. But I hope in the very near future we can meet again um, in hybrid, I say hybrid format, but so we give people the option to meet in person, um, as well as give an option to, to meet uh, uh, online. Though I, I think moving forward, we will, we will move to a hybrid, hybrid format. So um, to, uh, on to, at tonight's meeting, the, the key uh, agenda item is uh, community safety. Um, in recent weeks, many residents have raised with me concerns um, around community safety and the the, the well-being um, and safety of residents um, in, in Lazelles. We do have the Lazelles impact team currently operating in Lazelles alongside the uh, Lazelle's neighbourhood police team. The Lazelle's impact team is a group of officers who um, work with the community and other stakeholders to target uh, uh, particular community safety and ASB challenges in, in, in areas of Lazelle's. Um, I know that there's another meeting taking place at the same time in Hansworth where the neighbourhood police sergeant, uh, Sergeant Phil Southern, is at that particular meeting and we were hoping to be joined by uh, so the newly appointed sergeant to the Lazelle's impact team uh, to give us an a bit of introduction to himself and also the work of the, the team. Leslie, has, has um, Gavin joined us as of yet? No, not yet. I'm just um, messaging Neil the Costa because he, if you go into the wrong meeting, you'll be in Neil's meeting. Yeah, so there's a bit of, bit of confusion. Nevertheless, I think it's a good opportunity to open up the floor to take some comments and questions, particularly around community safety, that we can put to Gavin as soon as joins. He's definitely, uh, he's definitely at work. He's, he's just gone into the Hansworth meeting, um, so will be with us very very shortly. But um, I just want to open up the floor for any any comments, any questions uh, from from any of the residents that are on this this call. Jacob, you always have a lot to say. Uh, well, um, yeah, the other time there was some um, um, a burglar. Uh, someone broke into someone's house in the neighborhood here, and uh, they got up in the morning. They realized uh, someone broke into their, and they brought alarm into we, those who are living on Naden Road. Is there anything? you can do about that in terms of safety um, to alert the police or um, something. And then the other thing that I've noticed also is that uh, people um, patronizing our neighborhood with um, drugs kind of thing and uh, with our children in the area, which is not very safe for our children. Is there anything we can do about those? Apart from the huge problem that we have uh, with um, uh, fly tipping in the corners everywhere around uh, Naden Road. Uh, these are the two more questions I would want to put to you. If there is anything you can do about that to bring about safety. Thank you. In terms of burglaries to, to the neighbourhood, the, the Birmingham Community Safety Partnership in the past have, have done some work. The Birmingham Community Safety Partnership is made of the council, the police, the fire service and other, other partners. So it's a combination of people, agencies that come together to support communities. They have in the past rolled out um, projects that provide support and guidance um, and sort of um, physical interventions to help people become safer in their homes. Uh, I'm not sure if they've got anything running at the moment, but I will 
um, see what we can do. I'll have some conversations with the Assistant Director for Community Safety at the Council to see what's going on uh, to tackle um, and as, as in a way as a pre preventative measure rather than a reactive measure to, to burglars in the neighbourhood. Um, the, the, the challenge around drugs is, is an ongoing issue in, in, in Lazelles um, um, and you know, the, there's a number of number of factors that lead to, to, to this particular challenge um, and hopefully when, when the police do join us they can give us a bit of an update because I know that they do some intensive work around this uh, in, in particular pockets in the Lazales neighbourhood. Um, so I'll, I'll just hold that question Jacob right around drugs with, with and, and point to the police shortly. Um, in terms of flight tipping, it continues to be a challenge for us. Uh, I, I know it's a challenge, but it's one of the good news stories is Lazelles is not featured in some of the top flight tipping areas in Birmingham. Um, that we pro For those who live in Lazelles, that probably isn't the perception that you've got, but um, and it probably conveys that we've got such a big problem across the city in terms of flight tipping, um, but we're not in, in featured in the top wards. We do, however, continue to, to work with dog residents. The mobile household recycling centre has been incredibly popular. Next Monday, it's visiting Carlisle Road from 7 a.m. to 12 noon. I, I do provide information <coughs> to as many residents as I can. Uh, and I know um, dozens of residents, in fact, hundreds in, in Lazelles, have taken advantage of the mobile household recycling centre. That's why it's been a, a particularly uh, positive policy change for us and an and investment from the council. Um, we need to Sorry, councillor. It's it's uh, Mohammed. It's the first time I've joined uh, your sessions. Um, uh, thanks for arranging this. Uh, apologies to interject you there. I just wanted to ask you a question. Um, so uh, I live on the horizon development. Um, so my question was referencing what you just mentioned about Lozelle's not being part of the the top ten. What have your flight tipping? But how is that metric generated, right? Because if it's based on people. Um, uh, notifying the council about a certain flight tipping in a specific area. What I found is a lot of the time, most of the stuff is actually not reported. And I guess that's a separate problem. But if it's based on reported incidents, then that's not really a true indication of how bad it is in a local area. Does that make sense? So yeah. do you know how it's reported it, and it, how they drive that statistic? Yeah, absolutely. Right. The only way to, to drive that uh, uh, sort of metric is through reported flight tipping. And, and you're right, I, I'm absolutely... I, I agree with you that not all fly tipping incidents are reported, um, uh, but that is the only metric that they can use. Okay, so so that makes sense. So I guess that's probably why, although it's not in the top ten, because it's not reported, and I believe that's that's the case. That's the reason why it's not in the top ten. Otherwise, I believe it would be, uh, because I've noticed that as well. Just to echo uh, another residence, um, it's a big problem, and I feel as though if 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 the root cause isn't tackled, it's always going to be a problem. And it's always going to consume a lot of money that's being thrown into trying to, I guess, fix the symptoms, which is simply picking stuff up that someone's left. So my question is, what is actually being done to actually try and de-incentivize these people to throw stuff like this? Because in, in my head, I think technology has come a long way. So for example, my idea was, why can we not look to certain spots that we know are constantly uh, targeted for fly tipping? Can we not put together cameras? Because I think the only way to stop this is by actually persecuting the people that are, sorry, prosecuting the people that are doing this, right? Because every time I, I, I you know, report certain things, you know, I think the police say, well, you know, do you have a name? Do you have, you know, photographic evidence? In fact, photographic evidence isn't even enough. It has to be video evidence. So the only way to do that you know, is by having CCTVs up. And I don't think it needs to be, you know, uh, something expensive. I mean, you've got things like Blink, for example, Amazon's Blink stuff, which costs like 20 pounds, right? Which can do the job. And I think if you can at least get like details such as license plates, you can then get the police involved to start, you know, su su surveying, uh, doing some surveillance around this. And that, that's how you can get your video evidence. And that's how you can prosecute them, right? Because it hasn't changed. And I think we need to be honest and ask ourselves, well, you know, we can't expect that to be changed if we keep on doing the same thing that we're doing right now. And I, I appreciate, you know, it's a very difficult problem to solve, but I think we must look at other alternatives. And I think trying to go for, I guess, uh, a more uh, iron-fisted approach 
would probably stop a lot of these things happening because I think as soon as you slap one of these guys with like a 10 grand fine, I don't believe they'll do it again. Mohammed, um, you, you make uh, a number of very, very valid points. Um, and, and, and I absolutely echo your sentiments around getting to the root cause of the problem and enforcement against those criminals. I'll describe them as, as, as what I think they are. They are criminals, those are um, flight team. And some of them are professional criminals because they do this for a living. Um, it, it, it's absolutely important. Um, so there's, 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 I know there's been enforcement action within our neighbourhood from uh, evidence that has been submitted to me that I've passed to the council from people's personal and private um, CCTV coverage. So people have got, they, they capture some of these incidents on their home systems, which is brilliant. The council uses that as evidence as long as there's a statement from the person who owns the CCTV coverage um, um, to, uh, to take that forward. In terms of um, the, the, the sites, and we know that there are regular sites in Lazales and the regular sites across the city, um, we need permission from the courts for covert or overt CCTV operations. Um, and that is quite a lengthy legal process to be able to achieve that, and it's quite an expensive process too. Um, and to be absolutely candid, I don't think over recent years the council's quite got that right. I think we now have a system in place, we now have the resources in place to be able for, for that to happen. However, the council will prioritise those particular sites which are most regularly reported to them. And to come back to your first point, um, there's probably too many incidents in Lazelles of flight tipping that go unreported. And there's um, a whole host of, you know, flight tipping is a problem in Lazelles. I absolutely accept and acknowledge that. I'm not, under, I'm not trying to underplay that whatsoever, but it's also a big problem in a number of neighborhoods across our city, particularly across the city of Birmingham. Some of you might have seen a Birmingham Mail um, article only last week with the top most prominent locations, Lazelles was featured in them. So what I will say is I will continue to take the battle to the council to try and get as much uh, uh, as much resource allocated to Lazelles, uh, particularly on CCTV coverage. <coughs> and some of this is, you know, it's all, it's all mobile uh, CCTV coverage that can move around. Uh, but absolutely, we, we need to look at all mechanisms to that lead to enforcement. There have been and there are some ongoing enforcement cases in Lazelles. And, yeah. um, because as I say, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to understand the, the legal hoops because we do have CCTV around the city, right? Um, so I presume we would just follow whatever legal hoops that, that they, these guys followed, right? To, to have it stood up in the first place. If it's a matter about cost, as I mentioned, I don't believe, you know, we, we should be considering or we need to consider like the most expensive CCTV stuff out there. I think, you know, there are definitely alternatives out there which can do to, to basically produce the end result that you're seeking with a fraction of the cost. And as I say, you know, we can, any one of us can, can, can buy the Blink stuff, which literally costs 20 pounds, right? Battery operated, whatever the case may be. And I think it's, it's probably more a case of producing a business case to sort of state, okay, what does that entail? And then, you know, showing it in front of the, the decision makers, because as I say, I think, we have to go down the enforcement route now. I think this this whole tr treatment process, right? I know it has to be done, but it's not fixing the problem. We know this. And how much more money is going to go down to just, you know, res resolving these these symptomatic things that happen? And this this is sort of incentivizes them because they know that somebody's gonna someone's gonna call council, someone's gonna get rid of it. So I'm just gonna keep on doing it. Does that make sense? And and I feel as though that's the that's the mentality that these criminals have. So we have to look at an alternative approach now otherwise this is going to continue and i just think no amount of funding is, is just going to be thrown into a black hole due to you know litter pickups right and as i said i've seen it i've got family in other areas so you know other different wards but it's a problem in these areas and, and i just feel as though we as a uh, as a community don't do a good job in reporting it that's the first thing and secondly i think you know because of that reason, people choose our areas to dump stuff in. Uh, and because of the fact that nobody reports it or, you know, there isn't enough infrastructure in place to be able to prosecute um, these people. So they're just going to continue doing it. Uh, and until something's done about it, whether it's a sting operation or local sites, you have people actually viewing these sites or whatever the case may be. 
think, I think something something radical must be done here because it's not going to change. So j j just to come just to come back to your original point around how do we get these cameras up? Any camera that's point, pointing towards um, a public place needs permission from the courts. And whilst the arc of the cameras in the city that do that, they have to go through those legal processes. I think we all know from the experience of Project Champion in the east of the city that the, the challenges they are with CCTV, but that should not be a barrier. Um, all I'm just saying is that the, the there's probably if, to be absolutely candid, if I, I we probably need ten cameras just in Lazelles, that we've got so many hotspots. And if you think about the challenges right across the city of Birmingham, there's not going to be enough cameras to go around. But we do we do need to uh, we do need to continue reporting fly tipping one to to ensure that the, the, there's the right level of data there that captures the issue in our neighbourhood and also to get it cleared up. Because what I do know is. If there's a pile of rubbish, someone else is likely to come around, come around and dump at that particular location, uh, and that pile will get bigger and bigger before it's collected. But if there's no rubbish there, it's less likely somebody will come and dump some of the rubbish there. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, Mohammed, well, thank you. I, I, thank you for all your very valid comments. You know, I, I'm I'm not disagreeing with anything you've said. Um, Gavin's joined us. Um, I know I know you had a bit of a uh, you went into the wrong meeting or the other meeting in in, in the patch where. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, Gavin is the, uh, Sergeant Gavin McGraw is the new uh, police sergeant of the Lazelle's impact team. Um, I do want to take this opportunity to wish uh, Sergeant Benita Lewis all the very best. I know she's been unwell um, uh, for some time now. Uh, she's she's somebody with very strong connections to Lazelle. She grew up in our neighbourhood and was, was working as a uh, impact uh, team sergeant and doing a very, 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 very good job before her illness, so I want to take the opportunity to wish us, wish you well. So Gavin, if you can just introduce yourself and just talk a bit about the work of the Lazales Impact Team. There are a couple of questions I've taken which are related to your team and the police's work in the neighbourhood, but let's give you an opportunity first just to provide an update to the meeting uh, and then we'll open up for some further questions and comments. Yes, hello, Mr. Zafar. Sorry, my internet connection is not great, so I've got some of what you said and, and some of it I didn't. Uh, yeah, my name's Gavin McGrath, I'm the new neighbourhood sergeant for the, uh, the Lazelle's impact team. And as uh, I think you were pointing out, I took over from Benita, who, who had been on the team previously before me. Um, just want to take this opportunity tonight to sort of chime in, if I may. I'm working from home at the moment. I've only worked two days at the moment with the impact team. Um, I was in a Friday and Saturday, then I've been struck down with COVID on the Sunday. So I'm, I'm currently in self-isolation at home, uh, hence uh, uh, why I've come in uh, over the internet from home. Um, so um, going forward, I've, I've took over the Lazelle's impact team. I'm also working very closely with uh, Sergeant Phil Southern, uh, which I know some of you will know who holds responsibility for the, for the, the main neighborhood team. Um, me and him are going to be working very closely together and um, what we've decided to do, given the, the numbers we have with officers, is we're going to join the two teams together um, so we make more of a, an impact in the area so we can get more done, so we can undertake more policing operations and take a more proactive approach against criminals in the local area. Um, so uh, my background is I was a, the police sergeant for the Perry Bar neighbourhood team, which is the neighbouring ward. Um, and. I've just chimed in quite late into the meeting there because of the technical issues, but I've heard fly tipping as one of the ones that has been raised. Um, and yeah, I can uh, certainly sympathise with that. And I know that was an issue at that ward and is a, a problem across a number of wards across Birmingham. And uh, I have some experience in that sort of area. Um, but I've been a neighbourhood sergeant for uh, pushing on up to uh, just about 12 months now. And I've been Westman's police for about 18 years uh, and previously been a detective prior to uh, coming in as a neighbourhood sergeant. So uh, I've got quite a few things I want to do in the area and quite a few things I want to uh, bring into the policing approach into the area. Um, Mr. Safar, um, I just wanted to go through some of the things uh, the Lazelle's impact team and the neighbourhood team will be doing. Is that OK to come into that? that that's absolutely fine. You've just OK, so... Um, so You just mute yourself, Gavin. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Savar. My, my internet connection is a little bit stored. Um, I thought I may have been uh, interrupting you. That's fine. Absolutely cool. If you proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, I've been coming into the team and looking at sort of what the priorities are for the area and where we've been experiencing some issues. Um, it appears that violence in the area is quite high, especially amongst youths. Um, and there is a, a problem with a uh, gang and knife crime culture. It appears that we have a, a number of gangs that operate on us and also a number of gang members that live on us in the area. Um, so the team's gonna be doing quite a lot of work around that to sort of suppress 
uh, the violence and also uh, disrupt those engaging in that sort of behaviour. Um, and the team's been doing that over a number of strands. So um, one of our officers, PC David Manns, has uh, been doing school inputs. Uh, so he's been going to the schools these uh, young kids attend, because uh, unfortunately our gang members are particularly young, some of them as young as 12, uh, some of them as old as 17, 18. So that's the sort of uh, age range we're dealing with in our neighbourhood. Uh, so we've been going into the schools and doing a lot of inputs around knife crime, trying to divert those youths away from crime. Uh, but for those that are persistent in their behaviour, also uh, adopting pursue and disruption tactics where we're going out, encountering these uh, individuals and also trying to uh, do intelligence-led stop and search so we're not impacting on the local community and targeting those that are actually involved. Um, my team also do weapon sweeps in the local area, so they sweep the parks and the local streets where we know these individuals hang out, looking for weapons that they may uh, hide, hide away. Um, so we try and suppress violence in a number of ways in that way. Um, we will be doing some ongoing work around uh, dispersal orders. Um, so we know there's certain areas in the cells that, that suffer from high degrees of antisocial behaviour, especially around the Villa Road and the Heathfield Roadside. Uh, we know a lot of the local shopkeepers have been complaining around ASB in that area in respect of um, public drunkenness, begging, prostitution, drug dealing. Um, so we have been putting some dispersal orders on and we put one on this weekend in order to try and disrupt that behaviour uh, and disperse a number of individuals for public drunkenness on that day. Um, we've also uh, got a number of cameras which we're applying for. So um, sort of going back to the fly tipping, um, we've got some cameras that we've installed on the Villa Road, that's currently a hotspot for us, which we're targeting. Um, we're gonna be making some more applications. I think we can probably get another two cameras for the local area. Um, my plans at the moment are to target them at the junction of uh, Heathfield Road uh, with the Villa Road, because that's really an area for us, which is a real issue. Uh, and we're hoping those cameras can supplement some policing operations that I'm gonna be planning in respect to the people that are involved in the drug dealing in that sort of area. Um, also going forward, we wanna commit far more um, to foot patrol. So we're going to try and ring fence a number of officers for each time we're on duty who will be out on foot, giving that visible reassurance to the local community where the local residents can come up and speak to those officers and supply any information or report any concerns to them. And we're going to be putting those officers into the ASB hotspots where people have been suffering problems from begging, prostitution and public drunkenness. Um, also, uh, one of the big issues on the ward is exempt accommodation. I think this comes up on, on quite a few wards, and I think it's particularly problematic in the Lazelles ward, which is in respect of uh, exempt accommodation. Um, when I look at exempt accommodation in the Lazelles ward, we have a lot of crime and disorder, uh, which emerges around these sort of areas. And I think there's a lot of providers in the area uh, that take in a number of residents who have a number of complex issues, if we can put it in that way, uh, and then not managing them or supporting them in an appropriate way. Therefore, we get a lot of calls of service uh, to addresses where people are robbing from each other, burgling from each other, uh, and involving themselves in violence and drunken fighting. Um, there's a number of problematic exempt accommodations, is how I would put it, that we're going to be uh, approaching and dealing with the support agencies that run those. Uh, to see what work we can do with them and sort of lower the crime disorder in the area, because I think that's having a real ripple effect across the community. And I know that exempt accommodation isn't particularly popular with residents. Um, I know there are some that are very well run and we don't get any calls from them at all. And then there's others which are, uh, don't appear to be run very well whatsoever. Um, and then going forward, some of the work that I want to do um, as part of uh, the work that I'm going to be doing with the Zales Impact team is around uh PSPO so public space protection order so I've been having to think about this and, and sort of working in conjunction with uh, Birmingham City Council local authority um, I think a public space protection order would be something which would benefit the local ward um, it's something that I need to have a consultation with uh, in council and it's, a, it's very embryonic in this stage um, but I think we're there in respect to certain areas on the ward that suffers from high degrees of ASB that a public space protection ward, order would assist in tackling that really persistent behaviour with, with begging and prostitution um, and give officers a, a number of extra options to deal with that sort of behaviour uh, and start to bring a longer term solution to those sort of issues. Um, also, we, we've had a business watch with, which we've set up uh, along the Villa Road and Lazelle Road. Um, I think we can do a lot more with that and enhance it uh, and give it more support and meet with the shopkeepers more regularly. They supply us with quite a lot of information, keep us up to date with what's going on in the area and also uh, listen to their concerns and also what their uh, local customers are telling them. 
Um, and the pop-up police station, I know that's particularly popular in the ward. Um, this is something that we intend to keep ongoing. Um, I know a number of people come in and see us in respect to that police station. Uh, I think that's something that's going to evolve. I, I want to look at a more permanent location for that, which rotates, because um, at the moment it's being run from sort of like a mobile uh, policing bus. Um, so I'm going to be looking to put that in a uh, more permanent location. Um, and also um, you're going to see far more patrols uh, in respect of uh, on public transport on the ward as well, as I know some concerns have been made in respect of public transport and buses. Um, so as part of my officers patrol, we're going to try and get more officers on those buses and, and look to our more specialist resources like the safer travel team to do some more work on the ward as well. Um, so I, I've covered quite a bit there, um, but I, the main reason for me to come to this meeting is one to promote the sort of work that we're doing. Uh, but also I want to just hear what the concerns are from the local residents, what's concerning them the most and what they would like us to tackle. Um, thank you um, for your very detailed report. It, it's, it's, it's testament to the work of the, Liz, the Lazar's impact team that there was such a long list of projects that you've been initiating and, and leading uh, from the front on. Um, I've met regularly with, with the team and they've been updating me on a whole host of issues, particularly the work around Villa Road and the Villa Cross Junction with, with Heathville Road um, and, and some of the engagement that they've done with the business community there too. It's, it's, it's been really, really welcome. Whilst myself and my colleague Councillor were saying haven't, um, we're, we're not probably in the same place as the police on some of the some of the issues there, particularly with the road route. Um, we, you know, we, we have consulted with the businesses and they're in a different place, but we can continue to have those conversations. It's, it's really important that we look at, we leave no one's no stone unturned to address the, the complex and severe issues that do exist within within our neighbourhood. Uh, Jacob, you had a particular question that you, you asked earlier about drugs. Do you want to put that to, to Gavin? You're, you're still on mute, Jacob. Oh, hi. Yeah. Uh, what was the question again, sir? So you, you had a question earlier that you put to the meeting around drugs. So this is the, probably the right opportunity to, to put it to the police. Yeah, um, well, um, in, um, that's uh, speaking to uh, Gavin McGrath uh, directly, the Midland Police. Uh, we, we got drug related issues very often on this short street. The street is just about six mit 600 meters long and it is full of rubbish and every week nearly every week police comes here chasing people and it never stops um what can the police actually do to mount um a security check uh on the people because um we have children in in the neighborhood and it's not very good late in the night you see cars um parked around and you know, it's not safe. What can the police do about this to keep our streets, especially in the neighborhood, free from drug dealers? And my second concern as a citizen of um, Lozelle is where I am residing, we've got this flyover. Flyover, um, is it, um, how do you call this name? Uh, what is the name the of the flyover? The Hockley flyover. The Hockley flyover. I think people have turned it into a racing stop, and it's it it disturbs the whole neighborhood. People race on that flyover every now and then in the night, and I ask myself, why couldn't the police stop this sort of behavior? to enable people who live in the neighborhood to have peace after a hard working time. When they are, when we're sleeping, we are always waking up by the racing that people do. What can we do? I ask this question very often. What can the police do about it to stop the racing? Because it's not far from the neighborhood. And everybody around here, one kilometer away from, um, from the flyover, here's the lamp, the noise that it makes. You can't just sleep with that. What can we do? Kevin, do you want to respond to those initial comments, please? Anyone? 
Yeah, um, Jacob, thank you for your question. Um, so, in respect to drug dealing, um, I recognise drug dealing is a problem on the Zell's ward, um, and that's one of the, the things I've been speaking to about uh, with my inspector, Mr Hill, which uh, I believe he's been on this uh, ward meeting a number of times, so I think you all will be familiar with him. Uh, drug dealing is something that I want to tackle. That's going to be one of my priorities um, coming onto the Lazelle's impact team. Um, there are a number of hot spots on the ward where I get complaints in respect of drug dealing. There are a number of things that I can do. Um, one of the things I would encourage is for residents of the ward to report drug dealing to us. Um, we do have a good reporting anyway, but it's something I want to enhance because people tend to tell us about registrations, um, about individuals, about houses, um, and people can do that in a number of ways. One, doing it anonymously if they're not comfortable coming to the police directly uh, through Crime Stoppers. Um, so if people Google that or go online, they can submit that information uh, in a written form or they can ring the phone line if they wish to do so, or they can ring 101 and supply the information that way. Or you can supply it to a police officer directly should you come across one uh, when you're out and about on your business. So first of all, that's one of the things I, I, is, is my ask to the, the residents, the ward. Um, we need that information passed to us because unless we're told about cars, about the people involved, it's gonna be more difficult for us to do our job. Um, with that being said, um, there's a number of things that we are going to do to tackle drug dealing in the area. We're not going to solve it completely. Um, there's a lot of people involved in this activity from varying scales. Um, but I want, what I want to do is tackle those that are involved in sort of the quality of life crimes, as in the people that are outside your door dealing drugs from cars or on foot to local um, drug users, because um, that sort of ripples out into other areas uh, where people will come to your area and commit crime in order to buy drugs off people who are drug dealing in your area. Um, so there are going to be some um, policing activity and policing operations going on. Uh, the Home Office has recently given uh, the police a, a, a sort of ring fence budget, uh, which my inspector has given me some attitude with. So I'll be able to put on some um, policing operations pretty soon, uh, looking to target that sort of behaviour with specialist resources such as traffic units, drugs, dogs, uh, and officers from other areas I can draft in to sort of tackle those problems. Um, Jacob, what I will do, I'll put my email address in the chat bar. Um, if you send me an email, um, I wouldn't expect you to pass me any information in a forum such as this because it is put open to the public and I, I wouldn't want you to do that. But if you send me an email uh, with where you are, your street, what's going on, um, I'll look into that more closely. Um, and if it comes to it, I'll send an officer around to have a chat with you uh, in whatever form that may take. Um, secondly, um, just in respect of the flyover. So um, I know the, fl the flyover, which you talk about, uh, that flyover is um, one of the borders for us where it splits across four police borders. Um, and we do traffic operations quite regularly on that flyover. So you will know on Soho Hill, there's an underpass, uh, a parking area, and we will regularly do traffic operations there and pull cars onto the under the underpass to sort of deal with traffic problems now I, I totally accept what you're saying that you know you law abiding tax paying members of the public going about their lawful business and and you're having uh inconsiderate people with loud exhaust fly, flying around the area keeping people awake at night it's just not on um we will be doing some traffic operations so i'm hoping to come to the next ward meeting with uh, some more updates about the actual police activities going on in respect to doing drugs warrants arresting drug dealers and, and traffic operations that we're doing and as part of that traffic operation um we can start dealing with people for um, the things that affect your quality of life, such as loud exhaust, people driving, no insurance, people driving inconsiderately, people driving dangerously in the air. Um, so, that, so those are the, some of the things that we're going to do in going forward. And actually, the Hockley Flyover is one of our preferred sites to do the traffic op because it's a good location for us to pull cars into and deal with the people there. Does that make sense? It does. Uh, thank you, JP. I hope I've answered everything there. Thank you. Thank you. Very helpful. So, do, do any other residents want to come in? Hi, it's uh, Mohammed. Um, thank you, Officer Gavin, for giving you uh, giving us an overview of, of the, some of the operation that you're working on. It's um, promising to see that there is a concerted effort. Um, I feel as though this area, as well as others, um, it's not really given a priority uh, for one reason or another. So, so thanks again for for. Um, I guess moving across and, and working on this and, and thanks also to the councillor because uh, I know he's doing a lot of work to, to drive this. So just a few things from me. So I think one of the um, challenges that I've naturally faced is, is around reporting the crime, right? Um, 
And I know you mentioned Crime Stoppers. Uh, I, I just tried to go on the website just now. I mean, it's, it's sort of convoluted to, to try and figure out where you, what you need to click to. There's so many options to click, you know, if it's that emergency or that emergency. But I was going to ask, is there simply an email address that we can send as soon as we notice them? Because it's just a far click away. I mean, I, sometimes when you call 111, I mean, it takes like 20 minutes I mean, a lot of people don't have that sort of time to report things. So, sometimes they're just traveling somewhere and they see something. So if it's an email, they can just open their phone up, ping something across, and, and there you have it. I mean, calling and all this type of stuff, it, it doesn't promote um, engagement from people like, you know, I'm sure there are similar people like me who are short on time, they spot something. And, and a lot of the time it comes down to that. It's just the process for me to let you know. It's just, just too challenging or too difficult or too onerous. That's why it's just never reported. I mean, for example, the other day, um, so, so I, I go to um, the Asifa Institute and honestly, I saw a, a, a drug drop off literally right before me in a house. Um, and I thought, okay, I, I need to remember to report that. But then it's like, I went on the website, it's like, oh crap, there's so many different options. Then I remember calling 111, it takes like half an hour. So, you know, nobody has time to do that. So I think, is, is there a way where you can give us a method where we can just let you know as soon as we see anything. So, Mohammed, before Gavin comes in, um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna help Gavin out here because the bit of Lazelle's that you live in, Mohammed, Horizon Estate, is actually covered by um, Gavin's colleagues in the Aston Neighbourhood Police Team. Um, so, we, we do have a little issue where we've got two two police teams, and then we've got the Lazelle's impact team to support them on top of that. So two neighbor police teams that work side by side, but they cover two different areas. Uh, so the bit of the, the bit of Lazelle's, which is Wheeler Street to Six Ways, is part of the Aston team. I have put the Aston neighbor police team email address in the chat, as well as the Lazelle's neighbor police team email address. Uh, they are both pu publicly available, so I've not shared something that uh, isn't in the public domain already. Um, I, I encourage residents, because you might you might see something that you might not think is gonna is gonna get immediate police reaction, and sometimes a lot of the times it doesn't. But it helps build up the intel that could then lead to uh, something. And if there's a particular issue that is constantly reported to the police, that will get prioritised higher within the police team's um, duties and police team's priorities. So there's there's two email addresses there that I think. But there's also the the sign up, isn't there, Gavin, where people can sign up to regular. Um, news 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 e, e newsletters is something that I know Rob Capella's been championing. Gavin, do you want to come in? <coughs> yes, Mr. Safar. So, sorry, my, my signal, I don't know whether it's me or whether it's the room general. I got some of that and not all of it. Uh, but I think the general essence of the question is, is there an easier way to, to report crime to the police or incidents to the police other than going through 101? Uh, so, yeah, it, it's very frustrating. Um, I know 101 isn't as quick as it should be. Uh, obviously, if it's an emergency, it's always going to be 999, non-emergency 101. Um, but if you've got some information to supply, uh, yeah, I would encourage uh, using that email address that's just been given out, the Lazelles at Westman's Police pnn.uk um, that's where if you've got some general information such as you've seen a car drug dealing or you've seen um, someone acting in a suspicious manner that you think may be worthy to the police in a later investigation then by all means please email that in and an officer will deal with that as and when but it would be for very non-urgent information or if you see cars driving in a reckless uh, or dangerous manner that would be the box to put it into so we could have a look into it um there is some there is an online reporting method so if it is a crime that needs reporting you can do that online at the west midlands police website um it isn't the greatest of systems it is a little bit clunky uh, but it is a, a, a step in the right direction and i'm sure that will get better in time um so so yeah in short that, that that's the answer unfortunately there's not uh, an email address you can write to to report crime, but there is an email address you can write to to report general information. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from from colleagues? Just, so, just sorry, from... sorry, just a follow up question, if I may, uh, Councillor. So, um, sorry, Officer Gavin, you mentioned that um, the the email addresses are not to report crime. So, does that mean? Say, for example, I, I notice something 
and I wanted to report to you, i.e. a crime in progress, i.e. a drug drop off, right? And I emailed these, these two accounts that the council has added. Because you can't report crime, does that mean it won't get logged as a crime or it won't be monitored in that same way as like the online portal? Is that what that means? Hopefully you've understood the question. Yeah, so, so again, it's, it's been very broken up. Um, yeah, I, th I, think, I think from what I could gather, yes, yeah, so you can send some information to that email box. It won't be monitored uh, live time. Uh, it may be that it, it won't actually be seen for a couple of days. It will go through to the local team, such as the Lazelle's team or the Aston team, where they can pick that information up. So the box would really be for for really non-urgent information. Like I say, cars of concern, people acting suspiciously, things that you don't think need an, an immediate police response. Um, so the only way you can report something immediately is via 999, is via 101. Um, um, yeah, so only those two methods, or you can report a non-urgent crime via the website. Thanks, Kevin. Are there any other questions or comments anybody wants to make? Kevin, are there any closing remarks from you? Um, no, there's, there's no closing remarks from me in, in, as such. Uh, I just want to say I'm just looking forward to working on the area. Um, as I say, I've only been there here for two days, so uh, please give me a a chance uh, and uh, hopefully when I can meet and updates for you in respect to what our teams have been doing in the local area. Great. Th th thank you, Gavin, and thank you for the continued work that the impact team are, are leading on within the Zells. Um, I just really want to open up an opportunity if anybody, I know before Gavin joined us, there was a couple of people who made comments about fly tipping, but are there any other issues that anybody wants to bring to my attention? It's really a bit of the agenda, which is matters of concern to the local community. Yeah, hi, sorry, it's it's me again, councillor. So I just wa wanted to just highlight, I think graffiti has, we've seen an increase in that, unfortunately. Um, I've never spotted anybody doing graffiti, but you know, as time goes on, you see it prop up here, there and everywhere. So, I mean, I don't know if that's been recognized and if it has been recognized, what's your thoughts on the causes, who the culprits might be and, I guess what actions being taken to try and prevent that. So, so to be able, to be very candid with you, I've not come across much reporting on graffiti in, in Lazaz. I do come across it, but it's not often reported. Um, but are there any particular locations do you think is more prevalent than others? Um, so you know where the new town swim baths is. Yeah. Yeah. So that you know because they they got a uh, board erected. Um, you know, I think for some work, which I don't know if it's even being done. There's graffiti there. I know it's boarded. There's not much you can do, but then if you um, if you go straight along that road where you got the um, the underpass, you know I think there's spots of graffiti there. You know where there's benches by the Horizon Development. Okay. Um, so there's you know there's patches here and there right that you see, but like I said, I've seen it in increase, especially near the Aston Ward. You know, and I know there's there's quite a lot of exempt accommodation there, um, and there's a big problem when every time I go to that Tesco, there's always beggars there constantly. I always ask myself, you know, you know, it's so constant. Like, why isn't there any police sort of trying to, to, to disperse that? Because it's literally constant. And the other time I saw someone actually causing um, a trouble with, with locals who actually popped up, like, like um, you know, people of, 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 of that um, demographic. So I feel as though the problem has increased. But there doesn't seem to be any police every time that I've been there that have, have, have been there to try and sort of uh, stop that from happening. And there's always signboards that you see, you know, police, these guys are not true people who, who need your sort of um, financial support. But like I said, I, have, I can't remember the last time I've seen a police officer there trying to disperse these people. And I feel as though it's probably not happening because they're, they're always there. So in terms of the graffiti issues you raised, I'll, I'll pick some of them up. M most of what you've said is um, in, in neighbouring wards, so I will inform colleagues, but I, I will keep, on, keep a look at And what I will encourage people to do, if, if, if you come across it, just drop me a WhatsApp message or an email with a picture and I can always report it into the council to get it addressed. In terms of begging, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a problem that is unfortunately on the rise. And a lot of this has to do with the, the lack of support and available for vulnerable folk in the city. But Gavin, just, just to bring you in, 
Um, what's your, what's your take on on baking? Is 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 a problem within Lazales? Is a problem on on the Lazales Road on the Villa Cross too? But what, what's your intel saying, and what 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 are the interventions that we can bring forward to address it? Yeah, begging is is a persistent and, and problematic issue for, for the police, and, and it is on the increase. Uh, whether you look at it, even just on my route to work, um, I come across a number of individuals at every set of traffic lights on the way into Birmingham. Um, the, the, the police view is this, is that it is a criminal offence to beg. Uh, and it, it has been for some time and continue to be so. Um, it, it's what action do we take to, to eradicate it? That, that That's the problem. Some of these people, as you know, uh, have complex issues. And uh, whilst I'm sympathetic to that, uh, it shouldn't be done to the harassment of uh, nearby residents and, and, and people just trying to go about their business. Um, my view is this, is that begging shouldn't be occurring. Um, I, I think there's a, a lot of things in place for people, um, services within Birmingham, respect of housing, food banks, so on and so forth. Um, so my view would be that um, we shouldn't put up with it, essentially. Um, so when I was talking earlier about looking at doing PSPOs and the Public Space Protection Order, um, it was going to be those sort of measures that was going to target that sort of behaviour because it, it's quite prevalent in some areas and, and not so much in others. Um, and it's more prevalent in certain locations and not so much in others. Um, we'll always try and refer people to various services, so homeless charities, uh, drugs and alcohol referrals. Uh, we'll always take that approach. But for those that are the most persistent, uh, those that we've tried to help with, um, we would look for enforcement action at that stage, such as community protection warnings, community protection notices, banning people from the areas, dispersing them and dispersal orders. Um, so it is a persistent issue, it's a persistent problem. It is something the police are doing about. Um, the problem also with the individuals involved is they're very transient. So when you start to initiate a case against those uh, for persistent, repeated begging, suddenly one day they disappear. And then you find out they're in another area. So that process starts all over again because it's a different set of police officers dealing with a different individual. Um, but for those that are regulars or for those that want to um, continually, persistently beg in the Lazales area, uh, those are the individuals that we're going to look to take enforcement action against. Thanks, Gavin. And thanks, Mohammed, for your very valid points. Any other comments or questions? Okay, um, th thank you all, particularly you, Gavin, and thank you, Leslie, for helping coordinate this meeting. I'm gonna bring the meeting to a close. Uh, we will be having another meeting of the Lazales Ward Forum in March, depending on government guidelines. Um, it will be whether it will be either an online meeting or a hybrid meeting in the community. Uh, but in the meantime, if anybody does have any issues uh, of concern, anything they want me to address, you can always uh, contact me on a variety of ways. Uh, Google me and my contact details will come up on the council's website. Uh, and um, if you've got any police related matters that you want addressing, there is the, uh, the email addresses that I shared earlier, Lazelles at West uh, dash police, uh, West dash, sorry, let's start again. Lazelles at West dash Midlands dot PNN dot police dot UK. And if you live in the Horizon Estate or on the other side of Wheeler Street towards Six Ways, it's the Aston Wood Police Team and their emails also on the, on the, on the chat. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, hope you have a good evening. I know that I will see you again very soon, God willing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you.